Well, futures, let's talk about Perium. So Perium's the name I've been giving my uh, kind of peer-to-peer, -peer, peer economy thing that I'm starting to build now. That's kind of like the base underlying thing, and peer is my front end. And I think that front end back end distinction is something a lot of the people in the Ethereum developer community and the blockchain community in general are really missing. I mean, you need to really be building two distinct products, a decentralized version and a centralized so a simple example is Arcade City, which is building a decentralized Uber, but the problem is they're controlling the entire front end and back end. So they've got their smartphone apps you download, and then they've got their smart contracts that run on Ethereum. But really what Arcade City should be doing is they should be building a decentralized open back end for basically all transport that any provider can plug into. So Arcade City can plug into, Uber, Lyft, anyone. That back end decentralized part would be completely open, transparent, you wouldn't need permission to plug into it, and it would be kind of run as like an open source foundation that can be controlled by no one. And then for Arcade City, their front-end version would be the smartphone app, uh, their specific smartphone app for booking a decentralized Uber, essentially, um, their iOS app, their Android app. And that's where the competition layer happens. So that distinction is very important. The competition should happen on the top-end layer. The back-end, there should be zero competition. Everyone should be operating on the same platform that's impartial and removes inefficiency. So in building a new peer economy, that's the way I'm thinking about it as well. So Peerium is kind of like the decentralized open source uh, foundation that anyone can join without permission, um, and it's not controlled by anyone. And then Peer is kind of like my front-end consumer-facing approach uh, test project, I guess, attempt at <laughs> trying to have people work in a better way, work and live and learn in a better way. So why Peerium and what's the difference? Well, Peerium is kind of like a play on the word Ethereum. I mean, Ethereum I kind of consider as the base level where you can build anything. It's kind of like built just for computers and engineers. What I want Peering to eventually become is kind of like a layer that sits on top of Ethereum that is specifically built and targeted for assisting the development of a peer-to-peer -peer economy where it helps the individual. So it would be a bunch of tools, a bunch of currencies, a bunch of smart contracts, and a bunch of kind of like APIs and plugins, and, and mostly things for developers in order to power this peer-to-peer -peer economy. Now this whole concept is very much a work in progress, and once I do like put it out there, I'm going to need help from everyone. It's going to be a collective effort. Um, I, I don't think I have the individual intelligence to make this thing happen. And really what Peering is doing is kind of providing the base protocols for a brand new economy, a peer-to-peer -peer economy where the individuals are in control. There is no businesses, there is no top-down hierarchies. My first target is going to be work and education, so like decentralized peer-to-peer -peer work, peer-to-peer -peer education, because I think if you can provide someone with an income that gradually replaces their current job, that's how you can free people. So I had this thought recently about using Purium to basically structure all the tools and smart contracts around improving human needs. So take a look at like Maslow's hierarchy of needs and basically provide tools and smart contracts for each of them. I think while capitalism in some senses does help uh, many human needs, things like say food, um, if you have really good competition between supermarkets, food costs will drive down, so that's a good thing. In many other instances, it seems that capitalism is actually working against helping human needs. So think of things like property prices, shelter, housing, you know, that one of those core base human needs, it's just going up the other way. And the problem here is really that capitalism doesn't really encourage people to improve human needs. It encourages you to chase that one metric, money. So with housing, if you can make more money, it's better. In an ideal economy, we'd actually have people building affordable, comfortable housing for as many people as possible, and we'd be rewarding those people. Instead, at the moment, we reward those who have the biggest return on investment. I mean, it's pretty obvious in our economy right now, if you're a property developer or a property investor, you build the biggest, most luxurious apartments and buildings in the most desirable locations because you'll get the biggest return on investment. And you might think that's a very normal kind of human response. That's, you know, they, of course they're going to build properties and sell them off to make profit. That's what property investors and developers do. That's how they make money. Um, of course you do. But the only reason they're building these properties is because they know they're going to make a profit off it. There's an incentive there. That's the only reason they're doing it. They're not doing it just for the lols. Like, <laughs> there's actually going to be a profit for them. So it's incentive. So I think there might be a way to actually design economic protocols and economic incentives in a brand new peer-to-peer -peer economy that basically leverages those same profit motives, but in terms of human need. Just as in our current economy, there's an economic incentive for people to build big luxury apartments, we could design economic incentives where people actually are rewarded and incentivized to build affordable houses. So if you look at how to solve that on an economic based protocol level, like actually aligning the incentives towards improving human needs, then you can do that for all the needs, like clothing, food, everything. Instead of having a GDP for basically the entire output of the economy, like right now, you can actually have a GDP for every individual human need, and you can watch its improvement or decline. You want to create some type of feedback loop within each of these systems, so that obviously the more people are involved in this economy, and the more they stay within that economy, the more benefits they get, so it builds a network effect, so it keeps rolling. I think this system at scale, what it actually does is align uh, developers and entrepreneurs and kind of creatives and, and really the, the whole economic human progress around improving human needs. Right now, the entire startup and entrepreneurial scene is really all about uh, basically profit incentives, and it's really about improving the needs of businesses and companies, not the needs of individuals.
And if you can pull off an economy like this, I think what it actually does is scales. It actually aligns the entire human progress, the economic progress around improving human needs and human life. Such that even the most capitalistic, uh, cliche, suit-wearing douchebag who wants to just make millions of profit, their profit incentives are actually aligned to improving human lives. An economy whereby if you increase housing affordability, if you increase food affordability, if you increase clean water, if you basically um, improve the environmental feedback loop, you become very wealthy. I don't fully know how to design this brand new economy yet, like how to design the protocols to incentivize those behaviors towards improving human needs. But if you know, or if you have any thoughts, let me know at Future.